welcome back to the channel. It's Lit Life with Miranda Reads, and today we are unboxing the 12 Days of Book Club Mass Advent Calendar made by Once Upon a Book Club. Now this is my first year of getting a bookish advent calendar, but after doing this unboxing, I can tell you it certainly won't be my last. Now the Once Upon a Book Club's advent calendar is a little different from most. As with the other Once Upon a Book Club book boxes, each item or gift is associated with specific texts of the story. This time, however, instead of matching these gifts to a previously published book, the actual book is a collection of short stories written specifically to be a part of this Advent book box. If you wanted to follow the actual instructions from the owners, you should start the box on December 14th and read one story a day and open one gift until you get to Christmas Day. However, I'm going to go through it all today because I literally have no self-control. So beware, there's going to be spoilers for both the stories and the gifts ahead. Alright, I've got all of my gifts lined up in order. The dog is snuggled in. Let's get started. Day 1, December 14th. So we start with a short story by Margie Setchall. Jillian's wanted to go there as part of a workcation for ages. During the day, she would go with the other volunteers to restore a medieval village of St. Victor Lacoste, and the afternoons would be spent exploring. She originally signed up a few years ago and even put down a down payment, but then her husband became sick and all thoughts of continuing a joyful vacation were put on hold. Now two years have passed since his death, and she finds herself being put on this trip and onto the path of healing. This story was a sweet sad, where it begins pretty low, but ends up finding this wondrous high at the very end. Now the gift comes into play when she opens a letter that her husband penned before he passed. He told her that this was her dream and to go for it. The letter also includes a couple of sweet notes from her children. And the gifts that go along with it are a small journal with a bird on the cover, just like what she opened, and a bookmark that says, busy like a bee, frolic like a butterfly, sing like a cricket, mama bug fly free. And it also includes a book from the daughters to their mother to read. The book we actually unwrap is called Immoral Code by Lillian Clark. The book looks rather interesting. It follows five teenagers who band together to take down Robert Foster, which is the absentee and child support dodging billionaire father of one of the teens. I also should mention that for the book boxes, there are two options. There's the adult books and then the young adult, and I chose young adult for this round. All right, so then we have day two, December 15th. Ways Without End by TM Signal. Now, this is a gorgeous magical realism story that follows an old man and a young girl named Amali. Amali sets off for her very first adventure, but is quickly in need of rescuing. Her hero, a man that's been on more journeys than he can count. He spins a fantastical tale about magic hats, portals between worlds, and never-ending adventures. Amali wishes to begin right away, but the old man tells her he first must teach her a few things. I really adored this story, the magic, the atmosphere. It was really wonderful. At the end of the story, the old man leaves behind his magical hat which then becomes a gift that we must open. The hat itself is really well made and super soft and has this cute little bookish tag on it. Day 3, December 16th. Somewhere by Celicia Losa. In this story, we follow Lena. Lena is in high school, but she's already suffered more than she can handle. Her mother passed and then her grandmother, and now she's in foster care. Her new high school is set to perform West Side Story, and while she initially only wanted to be part of the crew, she finds herself auditioning and being awarded a huge role. She ruffles more than a few feathers doing so. This one was a very short story, but it did a nice job of showing grief and finding the strength to go on in just a few short pages. I also like that the author provided a Spotify list that went along with the different sections of the story. The gift for this one was a connection to Lena's grandmother. After the grandmother passed, one of the things that Lena held on dearest was the pillow that her grandmother handmade. 
and we get a pillowcase that says, shh, I'm reading to go along with that. Day four, December 17th, an adventure through literature. Now this one is probably my favorite story. We follow Amara and Iris, two best friends and completely normal in all ways except for their stories. They've lived through their own stories hundreds and hundreds of times, and Amara is, quite frankly, sick of being stuck in the back corner of the shelf. She decides to go find a new adventure, and her plucky best friend follows. But the other stories in the world? They're terrifying, and amazing, and so much more. Amara wants to continue, but her friend cannot stop looking behind. What should she do? So this one was amazing. I love the way the girls went in and out of the stories, the characters they read into, and so much more. It was really fantastic. At the end of the book, Belle from Beauty and the Beast hands Amara a book from her library to take home with her. The book is the gift this round, and it's called This Heart of Mind by C.C. Hunter, which follows Leah, who is surviving with an artificial heart in a backpack. She knows she is dying, and the backpack only grants her a few extra years of life. But then a heart becomes available, and she's overjoyed. But then everything plummets when she realizes it's only available because a guy at her school commits suicide. She begins to be plagued by these dreams and seeks out the twin of her heart donor and finds that he's been having dreams too. Together, they begin a journey. Day 5, December 18th. Lumi Blanche by Tia Arian. This story focuses on Looney, who is raised by her strong and unyielding mother. Her mother has sought, above all else, to sequester her daughter away from the world. Lumi cannot help but feel stifled, but when a fabled hero comes nearby, she instinctively reaches out. But it turns out her mother actually has quite a few secrets and reasons that Lumi needed to be separate from the world. And the most notable secret she has is that Lumi's real father is death. Now, this one was a really interesting concept and one that I would truly love to see played out as a full-length novel. The Daughter of Death, could you imagine? The gift associated with this one is from Lumi's mother. It's this green roller wand that the mother uses to put on face cream at night. So the idea behind using a roller is that supposedly skin flakes in a certain direction. So using a roller to spread the moisturizer in one direction only helps flatten the flakes. Personally, I don't know if this is real, but like the cold stone felt really good against my face. And I was surprised by how heavy the item was. And Day 6, December 19th, Before It Snows by Jenny L. Smith. This is a really sweet story about two sisters, Mac and Kara. On the way back from the library, they find a goat, of all things, on their picnic table in the middle of winter. Hence begins plenty of hijinks trying to get the goat out of their yard and back to their neighbor's farm. And once they get there, they get to meet a friendly farmer and have like a really nice conversation. This story focused more on friendship and familial love than most, and I liked its sweetness. Of the two sisters, Kara was known for her tendency to upcycle, and she would use a wheelie bag to tote around her stuff. Hence, the gift that gets associated with this one is a little bag that transforms into a wheelie one if you undo the zipper. It has a script pattern, and it seems fairly sturdy. Day 7, December 20th. Share Your Joy by Abby Steer. In this story, an author is at a book signing event for her latest and possibly greatest. She settles the crowd down and begins to read the introduction of her book. In it, we learn that the author was at a hospital because as much as she couldn't bear to admit it, her legs were no longer working. The bedmate in the hospital room was a woman named Emily, and together the two of them begin swapping stories. I thought this one was really sweet, and I feel like all I want to do is read the fictional story that the author was talking about in the short story. According to the little highlighted gift section, the author is handed a leather-bound book with a post-it note saying, Share Your Joy, and it's from Emily. I think this is in reference to Emily's copious journals. The gift we unwrap is a book called Dreamland Burning, 
with the same quote on a post-it note on top. Now, this book follows Rowan Chase, and she finds literally a skeleton on her family's property, which prompts an investigation into a hundred-year-old murder. This is a dual perspective book, so along with Rowan, we also get Will's perspective from a hundred years ago. Day 8, December 21st, Little Treasures by Juliet Madison. Lily and her daughter return to their hometown for the funeral of Lily's grandmother. It's a bittersweet moment. To see Lily's mom again is a welcome joy, but the situation is still unbearably sad. As Lily goes around town, she reminisces with old friends about how sweet family members are, and she begins to wonder if she should start putting down roots. Now, the gift for this one is a fun tie into the story. Lily agrees to go on a treasure hunt of sorts that's sponsored by a local bookstore. And the final prize she discovers is a little woman-themed coaster, which is exactly what we unwrapped. The top of the coaster has the cover and spine of little woman, and the bottom of it is like a sturdy cork. Day 9, December 22nd. Memories at Maple Grove Inn by Kristen Eckhart. Genevieve and her sister Joan have run this inn ever since their grandparents passed away. But then the storm of the century rolls into town and they have to stay the night. As they do so, they begin to relive old memories and find treasured trinkets from their grandparents. The gift for this one is related to when Genevieve cleans out an old closet and she finds a sweet letter and a steering wheel cover with a pattern on the flowing old script. She reads it and realizes that the love letter she finds between her grandparents was made into a custom cover for a steering wheel. Day 10, December 23rd. Love Overdue by Wendy Waltram. Almost immediately after the memory stories, we are prompted to open a gift from Love Overdue. Mary is working on returning books at the library where she works when her letter falls out addressed to the girl who sits behind the circulation desk and reads when she thinks no one is watching. The gift that goes along with that letter is a book called Eight Days on Planet Earth by Kat Jordan. That book follows Maddie, who's known all his life about the local legends regarding aliens touching down in his family's field. And he's always dismissed it. Until one day a girl named Priya walks out of those fields with an incredible story. Going back to Love Overdue, Mary continues to find letters tucked away in books in the library and begins to fall for this mysterious admirer. But when a reveal happens, her hopes are crushed. This short story is all about first impressions and why they shouldn't be your last ones. Day 11, December 24th. The Right Path by Krista Holly. This one follows a workaholic. She was supposed to be spending the week on a romantic getaway, but when her boss calls again for last minute help, she decides to apologize to hawk her boyfriend and promise to do better. But when she returns from the awful few days, she realizes that hawk is gone. With a heavy heart, she decides to make the trek to their would-be vacation spot on a hope and a prayer for forgiveness. The gift associated with this one is twofold. When she gets to the hike, the camping spot, she finds that Hawk was waiting for her, sitting on a camping chair, which is one of the gifts. It has heavy gold supports, and the script is the same as we, we saw for the rolling bag and for the steering wheel that goes across the seating spot. And then the other item is opened when Hawk gets down on one knee and it is a ring. And then we have day 12, December 25th, The Promise by Hazel Pryor. This is the last story in this book, and it truly was wonderful. We follow a curmudgeon old man named Magnus, who somewhat recently lost his wife. His son, Charlie, calls Magnus to let him know that he will be bringing over a lady friend and her two children. Grumpily, he allows it, and when they get there, it is awful at least to Magnus. The children are poking their nose every which way. The woman is too friendly and they won't stop talking. He eventually recommends they go for a walk during which they stumble upon a white rabbit caught in a snare. One thing leads to another and now Magnus is the somewhat proud nurse of an injured rabbit. 
and it is also only through nurturing the creature that he can feel himself starting to heal from the loss of his wife. The gift that goes along with this one is the story blanket. The children and their mother are huge, huge readers, and one thing they always have with them is the story blanket. This one has page four from Alice in Wonderland printed on it. Okay, so then as I'm putting away the items, I have a few thoughts. One, I really like the concept of the story blanket. I think it's really cool when they print out full pages of books like this. It is a little bit thin, so it's definitely more of like a decoration blanket rather than a pure warmth one, but I still quite like it. The book journal from earlier, it was fun. I didn't know it was at the beginning, but it has the letter printed from the children on there. So that was kind of neat. So I'll just keep that over there. I did not understand that I was going to get four books with this book box. And I am happy that that happened. The hat, love it. The other items, I feel like they worked pretty well in general. All in all, I was really delighted by this advent calendar. I really liked the quality and the variety in ad items. So it ended up being a ton of fun. And my dog Squamish definitely loved the reading snuggle time as well. I just want to thank you so, so much for watching. Happy reading and happy holidays. Bye.